Hello Spark fans and welcome back to Advancing Spark where I'm having another day looking at Delta Live Tables. So if you've not seen anything on Delta Live Tables before, this is not the video for you. We can carry on with some of the tinkering I've been doing, trying to build something that's really dynamic and frameworky out of what we've seen so far in the Delta Live Tables preview. So if you've not seen anything so far, I'll put a link up somewhere and you can go and check out one of the previous videos getting started with it, seeing how it works, my journey starting to try and make it a little bit more dynamic. So today we'll be kind of taking off where we left last time, where I got it working so we could pass a parameter into a Delta Live table and treat it like a template. So I could have multiple different Delta Live table pipelines calling the same notebook and passing in different parameters and reusing that code. And that's, that's, that's good. I, I like templating, that's, that's fine. What I really wanted to do was just do a, for each thing in this massive list, load all those tables. Treat it as one big thing. I don't want to have to write out all those tables. And the good news is we can do it. So I had a lovely chat with the chaps behind the Delta Live tables in Databricks. Uh, and they pointed out where my Python was terrible and I could do better. Uh, and now we can do it properly. So that's what this video is going to be about. So we're going to have a look at how you take a template, generic Delta Live table uh, notebook, turn it into something that can run many data live tables at once, and then look at what that does for dependencies and how we plug it in and all that good stuff. If it is your first time around here, as always, do not forget to like and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments what you're thinking. Is this useful? Are you planning on using it? Have you got your hands on Delta Live Tables yet? Are you working with it? And what do you think? So many questions. Okay, let's go and have a look. So, starting here. So I've got my Delta Live table built, ready to go. We can have a play with it. Uh, I realize that can going off the bottom of the screen so we can make that a little bit easier for you guys to see. There we go. So you can see there is a pipeline I have built, loading some data into bronze. So we're taking this kind of product table, AdventureWorks. If you do lots of Microsoft BI, you know AdventureWorks well. So we're taking this product table and then we're loading it into a silver table. So really straightforward. What this is doing actually is doing three three different stages. So we've got data that landed in a landing blob. So I've just got blob storage and I've got a um, little bit of JSON in there. So let's see if I got that knocking around, I can show you. Uh, let me just get that over here. And so I've got lots of different JSON files for the different entities coming out of that database. So I've got product, I've got sales, I've got addresses, I've got all the normal stuff you'd expect to see. So I've set it up to do one, to say, take that example bit of data, drag it over, Clean it up. So we're using Autoloader. So we're using the cloud files template in uh, to go from landing into raw, use no, uh, cloud notifications, build out a queue, load the data that I've not seen before, get it into a raw bronze table. From that, do a second hop, pick it up, look at it, clean it, add some lineage, do some nice stuff, and then put it into a silver table. That's what we're expecting. So the data as it was, one hop to get it into the lake in its bronze stage, Another hop where we could do expectations, we could do all that kind of cleaning up. Okay, so got my blob storage. I've got a couple of different folders for different schemas. And I've got all my different folders for my data. And then I've just got a bit of JSON. That's what I'm expecting. My data is super, super simple. Like read some JSON. That's all my data. Go and pull that in. So currently the only thing that's actually in there doing anything is that product one. So it's read that product JSON. The autoloader and everything, that's fine. We're not trying to fix that. That's something we've done before. So it's loading in that product and it's landing it in, but it is not dynamic enough. So I go to where we are. So if we look in this DLT framework, I've started to pull things together and I've got this landing to silver. So this is, this is my notebook that I've made. And I've simplified it a little bit from where we were last time. So I was using configuration. So that spark.conf.get means we're getting an environmental variable. Uh, and in Delta Live Tables, we can pass those in. So we could inject a parameter, and that's how I was doing templating. In this case, I've gotten rid of that, and we just kept things simple. I've just hard-coded it in here. So in my notebook, we say, import some stuff, read this schema, this table, and generating that path and telling it which folder to go and look at in that blob store. Sales LT product uh, means it knows it goes into AdventureWorks, into Sales LT, into product. Simple as which point pointing out at which folder to start from. We've then got a load of autoloader stuff. So I'm getting some secrets from my um, key vault. I'm setting up a load of the cloud file stuff. 
I'm doing some local stuff. I'm telling it where to keep the schema for this particular table and file. So we need to keep an eye on what we're doing with that. Uh, I've then got my Delta Live table stuff. So I'm saying, well, I want this incremental bronze table. Uh, pull it from that bronze. Um, call it that bronze sales RT product in this case. Um, it's a read stream. I'm passing in the cloud files. I'm passing in those config. I'm passing in uh, that second pile of config with the schema location and stuff. And I'm adding a source file. Yeah. And then doing, I'm actually doing it twice. I'm adding in my source file twice. Crazy. Just get rid of that. Okay, so I've got my data frame going in and that's being returned. The first function is just saying, read my data from landing using autoloader. So it's using event grid, using queues, all that kind of good stuff and bring it in and call it this thing. So it's going to be a view. It's not actually not going to write my raw data anywhere in the lake. This is just a logical view over the top of things so we can see it as a logical step in our journey. Then we're saying the next one, so I want another table. And we're going to call this silver, blah, 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 blah. And this one is not a DLT view, it's a DLT table, so it will land the data into the lake. And we're saying another read stream. It's reading that last table, so it's referring to the name we generated for the last one, so we can programmatically link these things together, which is nice. And yeah, all we're doing here is just tag it with the load date, tag it with inputs. I could include um, all of our expectations. That's where we would do this, but I'm just keeping things simple. So that's all it's doing. So a little bit of setup just for autoloader goodness. Take my table as a view, do the autoloader stuff. From that view, land into silver, and we're good. So that is what it's currently doing. And again, hooking that up. So it's realized. Nice parameterized things. It's read out the names properly, so it's generated the names of my two steps, and we are good. But that is not what I wanted to do. What I wanted to do is call that one notebook and say, yes, product, do that exactly the same. But could we also do that for the other things in my list for address, for customer, customer address, product, product category, description, model, sales order detail, all of that stuff. So how do we turn that one notebook into a do everything notebook? And it all comes down to how we're defining these functions. And that was the biggest problem I had originally, because I had something like this. And I was like, I'm going to be really, really smart here. I want to do get my function. And then I want to kind of take that and say, well, all my table list. But take my list. Give it a list of stuff and say product and go simple and address. I was like, right, okay. So actually, I want to do for my table in my table list. Uh, and just go, just go and do that. Just, just do that repeatedly. Do the same thing over and over again, and we'll be good. That doesn't work. Essentially, what it's trying to do is we're trying to recreate this function over and over again, and it has trouble. It's like, no, you, you can't. That function is already defined. What are you doing? You're an idiot. So that didn't work, and that's kind of where I got stuck. And it's like, oh, okay, no. So we, we can't, we can't just do a loop. I can't just say do this many, many, many times. Um. That's where the guys from Dedericks were like, dude, you're doing it wrong. There's a better way. So what we actually need to do, rather than treating it like that and trying to have all that stuff inside of our for each loop, what we actually need to do is turn all of this into a function and have that as a high level function with all of the other stuff inside it to, and to encapsulate that away. So anything that's to do with working out a location, we need to kind of just separate it out a little bit. So we're going to take this stuff. We will take that stuff down. Pull that down here a little bit. We can figure that out. Um, this stuff, the drift config, we're going to have to figure that out a little bit as well. What I'm going to do is going to put this inside here, actually. Okay. So all of that stuff is fine. That is all top level. We're happy with that. That can all sit together. Essentially, we have this initialization stuff going... Just get my details right, get my connectivity, get things working. And the stuff that's going to change for each iteration is going to be around here. So these two, my table name and my schema name, we need to turn into a high function stuff. So what we're going to do is define my, I'm going to call it load table to silver, sure, why not, uh, as a function. And that whole function has all of this stuff inside it. Mm -hmm. So now 
actually, despite the fact that inside there, we're creating those functions and we'll be doing that if we're calling this function repeatedly, yes, inside there, we are defining those functions because that's defined at a lower context. It's not actually trying to scope it to the same uh, context as the rest of the notebook, meaning we can do it. That's the secret sauce. That is the thing that actually changes how we're working. So in here, we need our schema name and we need our table name as inputs. And then that's the stuff that's going to be used all the way through the rest of it. And that's, that's basically it. So if we're taking all that stuff, we've encapsulated it inside there. We need that one as well. So it knows where to get the path from. That's going to be inside here. So it's going to, each time we call this function, we pass in the schema name and the table name. We reset our drift config just so we can get the schema location changing. We reset the path where we're going from just so we can look at each of our different tables in that schema. We then do exactly the same thing. We're building our bronze view. We're building our silver view. We're adding in our um, lineage columns. That's it. Nice and easy. So all we then need to do at the bottom, if I just get rid of that, we need to call this function. And that exactly that thing that I was trying to do earlier that for my table in my table list and call that function. I can pass in my, so my schema name's not changing, so I can just pass it in. And then I'm just passing in table. So each iteration, it's going to pull in whatever the current table I'm on, which would be product, then address, then other ones. So let's do uh, sales order detail. What other things do I want to add in here? Let's go with customer, get them involved. And let's do sales order head as well. Okay, so when this runs, I'm expecting that Delta Live table, that previously just one bronze view into one silver table, will actually be now five separate bronze views into five separate silver tables, all with one-to-one -one dependencies between them. So we can go and test that out, see if that actually makes any sense. Okay, so are we all good? We've got our things imported. We've got all our config all nicely set up there. There's nothing to do with tables there. We are encapsulating everything inside that one function. And then we're passing in our list of stuff and we're calling it in a loop. So let's take a step back and go over to Delta Live Tables and say, right, let's give this a go. This is still pointing at that same um, same place. It's still pointing at that same table, I uh, same notebook I had in. So actually, we can just hit go on this. That's why I did it. So I can actually, we don't have to wait for the cluster to start up. I can just say, oh, figure out what you need to do. And what we should see is as soon as it's actually managed to... Um, pass that notebook and figure out what it's asking for, you should see it suddenly update. And it failed. Okay, so why have we failed? What's going on with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, I passed in the schema name and it didn't like the schema name. What I get for coding blind? Let's go back, dive back onto that. So schema, oh, because I, I haven't defined schema name in here. That does, of course, make sense. I deleted that variable, so... Schema name in there just as that sales LT. Cool. Right. Give that another go. And that whole debugging experience, now that the in the latest version of uh, Delta Life Tables, as soon as you create it, it's automatically in that development mode. And that just means that when you've tried something, it leaves the job cluster turned on for a little bit. So you can get your code right, try it, change it, try it, change it, try it, change it. Uh, especially because we are kind of coding blind currently because we can't import DLT. So we have to try and get the code right and then come over to the Delta Live Tales pipeline and then give it a go and see it work. Cool. So I've now got a load of different things. We've got sales of the product, sales of the address, sales of the detail, customer, all these different things have now been created. I've got my bronze views and I've got my silver tables and it's gone through and actually gone in a loop but successfully created what's my different versions of it. So we can just check and say, well, that's product, that's all talking about product ID, product model, the address, it's all talking about things. So it's actually picked up the different schemas, picked up the different data, and it's pushing it through. Now I've told this to run on a tiny cluster, it's only on uh, one or two nodes. It's taking a moment to run through, but we can see things are completing, that's good. I've got lots of details here. So we can see our different flows, and there we go, it's completed. I can go and say, well, how many rows did I go through? We can see I had 32 rows, again, giant data set. And then if we go and have a look in data, this is AdventureWorks DW, was it not? Let's see, where am I putting it? This is going into AdventureWorks DW, so we should actually see that. Oh, DW AdventureWorks. 
But yeah, so if we refresh that, should actually see refresh the whole thing. Um, we should see going into Adventure Work DW a load of silver tables. Which we do not. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm not sure why that's not appearing in Hive yet. That is kind of interesting because we should see that. We have a target set. Oh, it's obvious DW Adventure Works. Okay, I'm just going mad. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, yeah, of course. So that is all the tables. Madness. Okay, yes. Because we're using views for the bronze layer, we don't have any tables for them because it's just a view. So it doesn't register the view. It's not a high view. It's just a delta light table view that it refers to inside the pipelines. So despite the fact that when we're on our stream, we see 10 different items, we're only going to see this layer of silver ones because they're the only ones that are actual DLT tables. So actually, that makes entire sense. So over in our data, for DW Adventure Works, I've got those different tables. We can just dive, make sure that's actually got some data in it. There we go. So I've got some data, successfully brought it across. It's got our lineage in there. So the input file, got the load date, all gone through quite nicely. Final thing I want to go and have a look at is as part of this, we have that separation. I mean, a lot of people think of these two things differently in terms of I've got my nice repeatable, automatable one-to-one -one of going from my landing area into my bronze layer, into my silver layer, or into my raw layer, base layer, whatever you want to call your lake layers. Um, that's one-to-one. -one. So landing, raw, base, landing, bronze, silver. It's just a one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one little nice little lineage chain. When we get into doing sort of curated elements, when we're trying to build out some summary tables and trying to play around with that kind of thing, it's not. We have dependencies. So I've got a really simple little example here of doing a DLT notebook that's curating some data. So what we're saying is I'm going to make this color analysis table. Really simple example. That is we're going to create a new uh, DLT table, create the function for it. And I've got a load of SQL that I'm banging in, which is just to say, just take all the individual colors, join over to the sales table, tell me the total sales for that color and tell me the max amount for that color. And you can kind of see I've cheated and kind of just did a quick run of that SQL so we can see what it looks like. We're expecting to see all these different colors, how many products of that color and the total sales. Now, the difference is, so this is one, we're referring to DLT tables here. So you can see I've got live dot, live dot. Now, despite the fact that actually in my data set, and they're actually stored in this DW Adventure Work database because this is passing it all into in terms of that uh, DLT flow, that DLT dependencies. I can refer to other tables in this same Delta Live table run by doing live dot and then the name of that table. So because I know it's going to be called Sales LT Product, I know the other one can be called Silver Sales LT Sales Order Detail. I can actually build this out preemptively and say, well, actually, just stitch these things together. So the other thing I wanted to try was saying, well, actually, I've got this Adventure Works DW, which was nicely going and creating that one to one lineage and everything. But what we can do is actually extend it and go, well, there's one notebook in there currently. I would like multiple notebooks in here. I'm going to take that. I'm going to do that. Add another notebook to our list. Uh, I'm going to just dive over here. Save on that going to get a little bit confused. <laughs> I'm going to grab the uh, file path from there and then go back in and edit it. So we've got these two notebooks and that's, it's confusing. It's a confusingly named thing. We've got libraries. Like what libraries do you want your TLD to use? That's not referring to libraries as we know, Python wheels or Scala jars or any of that kind of stuff. It's saying which notebooks do you want included in this whole run? So what we're saying is I want one notebook first, which is recurse or go in my loop, get all of my different tables, do my landing to bronze to silver and then get a second notebook and figure out any curation I'll do on the top of it, which is just using that kind of a little bit of Spark SQL to refer to the tables that are already going to exist. So I've added another table into my, I've added another notebook into my list, which is going to add another table, which is going to depend on a couple of these things. I can do start. I'm going to read it. I'll see if I've actually managed to hook that up. Again, coding blinds very weird. What we should see is once it's actually read through and it's done its loops and it figured out all the different things that we're asking for, um, we should see, right, okay, there's a new table and that's talking about two existing silver tables that are in this same Delta Live table pipeline. So we should see a little kind of join up, there we go, of this additional table. So now I've got this color analysis, which is based on that SQL because in that SQL, we refer to two of those live tables using that live dot. 
syntax, it figured out that it's got a dependency on product and it's got a dependency on sales order details because that's what's in that query. See, that's now ran nice and happily so we can go all the way down and see all the different things are going. So the flow for color analysis is complete, completed. And again, we can see nine records, got nine distinct colors. And again, if we go over to our data, we should be able to see color analysis is now part of our table. And we can see all of our different color data has gone in there quite happily, quite nicely. So get in there, get in there with Delta Live tables. So our ability to now to have a very, very generic process that can run for a bunch of stuff. Again, the same way we did in the last templating one, we can say, refer to my metadata, work out all the tables that need processing, go in a loop, set those up as Delta Live tables, spin them out and have a hundred different tables in there. And then separately, I want to keep all my separate notebooks that are actually my curator ones that the business is managing. Maybe the business aren't writing it in the PySpark and SQL way, they're just writing it using pure SQL and they can do it in a separate notebook. But as long as I attach it as one of the libraries in this Delta Live table pipeline, I get my dependency view and it works out when it needs to run them and it goes through and does everything. So it's quite nice, works quite nicely. So that was the thing I want to do. That is all I wanted to rant on about today. So that is taking a Delta Live table, creating a higher level function around any of the function creation script that you've got in your uh, pipeline definition scripts means that you can then call that in a loop. You can call it many, many times. You can reuse it. Don't know how well you could actually push it into your own custom wheels if you want to call functions from there because then we're talking about being able to import DLT, which we cannot do. So there's interesting bits about how much we can encapsulate and how much we can't encapsulate. But the data frame definitions could be calling functions. So you could have those higher level functions calling other functions that you've done and actually build it out to do something really fairly slick. So yeah, very, very promising the fact that we can now do that, that we can build out these things that's going to essentially allow us to build engineering frameworks and automation on top of Delta Live tables. So we're getting the good parts, nice that nice dependency view, the fact that if you switch down to production, it's going to run automatically, it's going to optimize it automatically, it's going to do things like auto compact automatically, Gonna run on its own job cluster that looks after. We can kind of just sit back and ignore it. So that is all working, but we can still use the engineering practices that we've all been building out over the past few years to actually enhance it and accelerate it and make it metadata driven. That was always my concern with Delta Live tables, isn't that if it's not metadata driven, are we going back to the, the dark ages of having to just literally have code everywhere for every single different thing I need to do? But no. We can build generic things, run for each of the things in a giant list, wherever we get that list from. And then suddenly the act of automation, the act of bringing stuff on becomes a lot easier. So in that pattern we've just gone through, if someone said, can you bring another table in? And I was getting that list of tables just by calling a database, by doing a lookup somewhere, looking up in another Delta table, I just need to add a record into that list. And then next time my pipeline runs, it'll see that extra DLT pipeline uh, entity definition create those tables, include it in my dependencies, which is very, very nice. So that is all I wanted to show you today. Hopefully that is useful. Hopefully it's inspiring to go and try out some different things and try and challenge some of your engineering pro um, processes and say, could we do something like that? Could we, does that work for us? So definitely an interesting time. Lots and lots of interesting stuff coming and more nerdy things I've been tinkering. I do want to dig into the metadata and what we can see with expectations and how we can go and actually visualize all that stuff. So that's probably going to be the next thing we're looking at. But otherwise, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments if you're going to use this, if you've used something like this, if you're already having a play with Delta Live Tables, how have you got on with doing that stuff? And yeah, otherwise, I'll catch you next time. Cheers.